Um, I can really say that it has been tough on my end because of due to training with um, track, but also but right now I'm really grateful because I've, I've accessed the gym and I'm really preparing for intercontinentals that's going to happen in right here in Nairobi in October 3rd. Normally I've been improvising my training. Um, I went to a near welder so I made um, some few tools for my training equipments and at least from there I've been able to keep fit once in a while and also I've been training in Karura Forest just to do my speed endurance and also speed as well so that when the competition comes near so that at least it won't, be, it won't get me off guard. Um, normally we've been coordinating via emails when he sent me program via emails and also we've been, to we've been chatting most of the time via WhatsApp. Sometimes I do send him videos of my workouts so that he can correct my form and tell me where to increase, where to reduce. And it's, it's, I can say for the past three years I've been training on my own since because of the distance, but right now I'm really comfortable and I'm okay with it. Um, first of all, I'm really happy so that I'm not ending my season without any race. And I'm really happy and I'm so grateful for the World Athletics to consider Nairobi as a host for the World Continental Tours. And hopefully that I'll be one of the athletes to represent my country in the 100 and 200. And also just to show guys that sprinters are also there, not only long distance, but we are also there that we are trying as well to reach at the top level. Yeah, the Tokyo Olympics is one of my greatest achievements since um, I went for the London World Championships in 2017. I wanted to qualify for Doha as well, but unfortunately I had an injury, but I still represented my country in Morocco for the All-African Games. But I'm really looking forward to go for the Olympics because, first of all, it will be history-making. It will be history-making because I believe we haven't had any athletes representing the 100 meters in in the Rio, 200 years we have, I can say, Kevin Kanata, um, he trains in the US. So, and since the times have been reduced to 10.05, if I run anything faster than that, also it will be history making and it will be also an opening door for sprinters right here in Kenya. If I, if I make it past the heat, I can really say that's good because right now I'm, I'm close to my off season training. And I'm also going to take an off-season break as well so that I can sit down, regenerate and start thinking for the, for the Olympics as well because it's going to be a major event. And also, I can really say that the training is not going to be easy because I have to train knowing that if I want to reach at the finals, I can't train average. I really have to train smart and also have to train specific things. Sprints itself, it's, it's so expensive. I can really say it's so expensive when it, because normally I, can, I hear like beginners come in and they really expect so much in sprints, but you really have to invest so much in sprints. And I can say that we can't, sh we are almost more than 30 sprinters in this country and we can't ship all athletes to various countries because it's also expensive as well in terms of accommodation, in terms of coaching and also facilities. Because I've had like, there was a time where I wanted to, travel to London because I went to World Championships in 2017 so I, um, that time there was a guy who told me that if the, if the Federation can organize so that I can go train there and we just sat down and realized that the cost that will take such an athlete like in fact individually it will cost like let's say one million to ship someone over there and, and I was thinking and I was like it will be much easier to look for to identify, me, let's say, a coach, because I know that there are guys like in the United States that they are really, um, they are really, what can I say? They are really practicing and they are also studied sprints coaching. So we can really identify one, ship them here because we can. I can say like the federation can accommodate them and let's say give them food or anything. But as long as they can identify specific athletes that they can coach them for a period of time, 
that will be much greater and it will be much cheaper for also for us. Um, how do I chill out? I just stay with my wife at home, enjoy, watch movies, sit down, and also have fun with our teenagers most of the times because I can say, in fact, towards the end of every year, we usually have more and more activities for them in terms of going to camp, um, in terms of just church activities. So those are the things that I really, really look forward to, going for missions, just going outside there, helping other people out, just knowing that there are, there are other people who are really struggling and they really, really need help and they really need need to know that there are guys outside that they really love them. So we normally do all this outreach just also to clean our area and just to embrace the community around us.